In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect uh, your GPT, a uh, custom GPT, to your Xano APIs. Um, the example I'm going to use is just going to be a simple meal planning app in GPT. And I'm just going to attach it to a Git that's authenticated in Xano of some data. So just at a high level, what I've got here is a paid for OpenAI account that allows me as you can see up here with their new marketplace, it's going to allow me if I hit explore GPTs to see what's out there. But most importantly, we're going to use the create to create a GPT. Then on my other screen, just a very simple um, meal plan workspace that I created in Xano. I just created it with a standard email authentication login. You can see I've got a user table. Uh, I put in a test account that I can use so that I can get an authentication token when we do our testing. And since this is meal planning and I wanted to show a list of something through GPT, even though this may not tie in directly, I created a protein table and just gave some examples of proteins that we'll use to create our meal plan with. And then just for the fun of it, I cr had a Dolly create images of each of the proteins in a photo real, photo realistic style. The goal here is I really wanted, when the API data returns into the GPT, I want you to see that it handles the image and displays it as well as part of the response. So just trying to make it as complete and short as I can to get everybody started. So the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna flip back over here to the GPT screen. We're gonna explore GPTs, we're gonna create from the button in the upper right. And I'm gonna spend a minute just doing some setup in the create that it defaults you with so you know what that looks like. But we're gonna do our API integration um, down here. I'm gonna turn off the Dolly image generation because it's not relevant. And we really don't need the web browsing. I'm just gonna start it in as simple a fashion as possible under the configure. And then we're gonna be coming into the create new action here momentarily. But I just want to give you an idea, if you haven't done one of these yet, what it looks like to build one. So let's start with um, create, we're going to have typo problems, create a meal planning GPT that asks for a protein and then creates one five ingredient or less recipe for the prompter to use. Okay, let's see where that takes us. Nothing is consistent in good um, chat GPT fashion. So if you type in the exact same thing, I would assume you might see something a little bit different than what I do. And I think that's where, you know, computing is going to look a little bit different from development. We're used to development being very distinct, put in data, get the same thing back every time. With um, LLM models, I think we're going to mix in a little bit of subjective returns against distinct data, which you'll see here in a little bit. Okay, so great. We're creating a meal planning GPT. Let's decide on a name. How about Simple Chef? I'm just going to say yes. You're more than welcome to tell it you want something different and it'll keep trying. Yes. I'm going to agree with them to keep it simple. Now, most of the time when I'm creating one of these, it'll also, as you can see, generate a profile picture, which is going to replace over here on the right, the logo or the image as I would refer to it. So we'll give it a little bit of a chance. It's about halfway through. I'm going to just, to, you can also ask it to try different logos. Um, keep this one, and there you have it. So it's automatically on its own. Put the simple chef name, its own tagline that it created, and the logo over here. Let's see what else we have. Keep the profile picture. Let's refine the context. Going goal. What specific types of recipes or cooking styles do you want? Besides five ingredient limit, for example, should it prioritize healthy? Yeah, prioritize healthy and quick. 
I could probably tell that I want to stop right now and get right to the API, but let's just see about where it takes us. A lot of the times after a couple of questions, it'll tell you to come over to the right and give it a shot. Quick and easy, simple chef should avoid. Are there any ingredients cooking of it? I will connect to an API that gives a list of proteins to present to the prompter to select so that you can use the selection to create a recipe. Okay. Do its final update here, hopefully. Now, technically, I don't know exactly when it's going to call the API. That's part of the fun. Uh, so we're going to minimally show you how to set it up and test it and see the response of the API. And then we'll also mess around just for a little bit and see if it calls the API at the right time or how it goes about doing that. Okay, now let's uh, should interact with users. Okay. All done. All done. So I'm going to switch over as soon as it's done. Fantastic. Set up ready to assist with meal planning. Offer quick, healthy recipes. Okay, so now I've got it to the point since I told it I was done that it wants me to test it out. But before we mess around with that, because I could easily lose an hour of your time and mine just kind of tuning it, let's go over to configure. And I'll show you a little bit of where it's not so magical, right? Right here is where I could change the logo if I want manually, change the name, change the description. Um, this is the instructions that it came up with based on how um, I answered the questions it asked. You can go directly in here and change this as well if you want to be specific. You can also change the four buttons that are down here as starting points. It generated four of its own. You can add more, delete, um, change what it is you want to prompt people with. But we're going to get right to the fun of create a new action down here at the bottom. So when I create a new action, I am going to set up the authentication. This is the authentication that will tie in to the bearer token that um, Xano needs for the API. And so what I'm going to do is switch over to Xano, where I have this simple meal plan set up. I'm going to go into my APIs, because as we all know, easiest way to get an auth token is just run and debug. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get this copied. Come back over here, drop it in here, and save it. So now it's going to use that auth token, which isn't optimal, but this is what's getting us started. Optimally, what I'd do is I'd have a login, and I'd be able to share a variable auth token, which I'm guessing you can, but you're kind of living this as I do, so we'll, we'll see what it turns into just doing it manually for now. OK, so we've got that set up. The next thing I need is an open API schema which is equivalent to a Swagger schema, which, as you may remember, is the documentation in Xano. So if I'm here in my meal info API group, I have a documentation Swagger here that just shows the one I have. If I come up to this link under meal info, this is the Swagger doc or the open API uh, schema. So I'm going to copy that whole thing. I'm going to come back over here, paste it, and then they have a handy format button. Now, what you're going to find out and what tied me up for a while when I first did this was I dropped this in, but it isn't matching exactly what's expected. It's telling me that it's missing an operation ID property. So what I've discovered is if I scroll down until I see the get protein API summary description. I've seen in examples online where the operation ID probably doesn't have to be right in this after description, but 
to make it simple. Um, I can manually add this and I can say get the protein list. So, and then a comma because I have properties after this. Now, what you're going to see because OpenAI isn't perfect yet by any means is it's not overly happy with me adding just the operation ID. This is definitely a needed piece. I think the open API spec may say this is optional, but um, open AI says it is not optional for what they do. So I manually add this in for each API from Xano at this time. But then you start seeing that it, it doesn't see this as a valid open I spec yet, open API spec yet. And what I've discovered is if I scroll down to, let's see if we can find it here. We are looking for the created app. There it is. So if I'm looking at the return, the response info, right? This is response. It's assuming an, a success, a 200, and it gives me the data schema of what's being returned. One of those is created app, which is a number and it's a timestamp format, but we have a default that has now as text and it does not like that. So if I get rid of that, you'll notice that instead of the error now, I have the get protein list operation ID and I have this that I can test. So we're just gonna do it, test. I clicked on test. You're gonna see that um, it reaches out and it wants to ask permission to call the API. I'm gonna say always for my subdomain with Xano. And if all goes well, there it is. It talked to the no code, let's web three, my API. And now what you see it doing is bringing back all of the data and the images from the API and automatically formatting and showing this information. It's moving in its normal slow chat GPT fashion. But all that being said, it's successfully called the API. While it's doing this and showing the images, I'm gonna come back over here because if we go into the API and look at the request history, you'll see that at 1248, which was you know pretty much just right now, this is the API call that it made. And the output that it got from the table that I showed you that I had pre-populated with proteins and images and it's going through and displaying all of that. Now, what it should do based on the prompt I gave it is when it gets to the end of these, which it's just arriving at, it should ask me which one I want. Um, it doesn't always get it right. Maybe just like a junior associate in a company, you might have to keep training it to get it to do what you want it to. But this is about as easy as it can get to integrate an LLM model via a GPT into the data that you own in your back end and the business logic you have. And my goal is, can I keep talking till it's all done so that we can see what it's gonna ask us next? Okay, how much is it showing us here? There we go. Yep, please select one and I'll create a simple, healthy recipe for you. Um, the steak. So we're gonna see a great choice. It's versatile, flavorful, and a quick skillet steak with asparagus and red potatoes. So here's what I've got, which is my five ingredients that I'd requested. It's gonna give me some simple instructions on how to prepare this. Um, potatoes and asparagus. But the nice thing is if you had created a web front end to do this, you know, it, it wouldn't be hard, right? API call, have them select out of a drop down what the protein is, maybe even have some scraped recipes from the web that you show. But some of what I like about what this gives you as a front end is I can say, um, change the vegetables. I don't like asparagus. And so what I'm able to do as a prompter, a consumer of what your GPT is, is I can, you know, have a conversation with it and have it change things 
uh, very dynamically without me doing any coding to support that. And so at this point, it changed it to be a quick skillet steak with green beans and red potatoes. And so you can take this as far as you want because you can come back to create and you can just keep prompting over here on how you want it to tune itself. So at this point, I'm gonna call it good. What we've been able to do here, as you saw, is just a quick summary. We created a brand new GPT, did the simplest of configurations um, and prompting just so we could get to the point where we manually went into the create new action and dropped in, oh, I didn't save it, um, dropped in the, um, here we go, let me click on the right one, sorry, went in here and dropped in the Swagger documentation, added an operation ID, and changed the created at response from now to um, not having a text field since it wanted it to be a number field, and then had access to the API at that point. Uh, from a Xano perspective, it was very simple, right? All I did was create a new app, add a protein table, put some items in the list, and then um, use that Swagger documentation to tie into that. The more APIs you have, the larger your Swagger doc gets, but you can configure all of that in GPT just like we did this one. Uh, if there are any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments, and we'll just keep rolling down this path and see how complicated and interesting we can make our meal plan.